TCI is brought to you by Spendthrift's Malibu Moon, sire of seven Breeders' Cup contenders in 2017. Best of luck to all the connections this weekend at Del Mar. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Breeders' Cup. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Well, Joel, we made it, man. This is our pick show for the Breeders' Cup. We've been following these horses for a long time. It's going to be a great race out there at Del Mar. Looks like the weather will be perfect. I'm interested to hear how you felt the draw might affect some of these races. So let's jump right in because we got a lot to talk about. Let's start off on Friday and let's start with the Juvenile Phillies turf. Tell me, what do you think about this race and how does it size up now going into the weekend? You know, I still like the European class quite a bit. You never know how they're going to suit to our style. But, you know, as far as looking for a Philly, I think has some upside at that mile distance, you know, that that has enough racing experience, has appreciated firm ground already, so that's not a question mark. I'm actually going to side with September in here, the mm. other Coolmore filly, because I like where she drew in here, John. And again, you're going to get a little bit better of a price for your uh, for your risk at six to one on the morning line in here. Uh, obviously, Happily's the other Coolmore; she'll be the favorite in here, and deservingly so, based on uh, multiple Group One wins. Rushing Falls interesting. I mean, this is a pretty solid race, but you have to love the class from the European. So I'm going to take a swing with September. She's already beat the Colts at Ascot, and again, she's appreciated that that uh, as she stretched out to a mile, and I think I think that's the difference in here. Now, if you want a long shot, I'm going to give some long shots as we go along okay. here. Horses that have caught my eye that I think can run well at a price. Ultima D for a sharp barn, Wesley Ward, a lot of stamina on the female side of that pedigree. He's run against the boys a couple of times. That shows you what Wesley Ward thinks about her. She comes out of a key race uh, where best performance came back and ran well in the Miss Grillo. I think she's going to uh, appreciate two turns and she has tactical speed. So she gets out of the minutia. If she's able to get on the front end in here at 12 to 1, I think she's a filly that's shown enough ability that she can keep going, maybe like a catch a glimpse and be very tough to catch over a firm turf course at Del Mar. And uh, I liked her breeze the other day too when she breezed with a, another Breeders' Cup participant. She went away from that horse on the gallop out. So ultimately, watch out. All right. You know, it's, Friday is not just Philly's day. There's also some other good racing in there, including the dirt mile. This is always that race where you see horses that decide to not go in the sprint, you know, maybe not go in the classic. I do notice that on the, on the top five that you have a horse we talked about last week. He barely snuck in there, but Practical yeah. Joke is now on the TCI top five. Tell me, what do you think about his draw and does he have any shot in here? That was an intriguing uh, post position draw you mentioned, you know, who was impacted, who wasn't. He was a horse that I personally want to see in the sprint as a late running closer because I think there'll be enough speed in the sprint. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if six would have been a little sharp for him. They obviously felt like it was. It was a tougher field, obviously. This is not a great field. Like you said, this is usually where long shots, we can see long shot outcomes because these are usually horses not good enough to run the classic or maybe horses that have tailed off. So I'm going to go with Accelerate. The local horse, blinkers on, last two, pop big buyer numbers running against good quality top class California competition at Del Mar. Johnny should love a two turn mile. And John Sadler has always pointed for this. Even when he beat Arrogate in San right. Diego, they never said, we're thinking about the classic. They said, we're going to focus on the dirt mile. I just think that He's the type of horse that's going to win this type of race, in my opinion. There should be plenty of other pace in here. Practical joke from that outside post, John. Hard for me to like him winning his first two-turn race the way he hangs over a field like this, particularly when you're facing Accelerate in his own backyard. All right, back to the turf now. Let's talk about the juvenile turf. This is a race where uh, we saw, I think your number one actually uh, decided not to go in this race. Tell me, what do you think about the race now that he's out? Yeah, U.S. Navy flag. You know, I mean, it's all about trying to make a stud career. They've got a ton of Group 1 winning sons of Warfront. They don't have many of them that have won on the dirt. So I think having a, a champion dirt two-year-old, you know, there's the appeal there. So there's no question that's why they're running him against the Colts in, on the dirt in the juvenile. So they're sending out Beholders half, mm. who really made improvement last time out with Blinkers, enjoyed the stretch out to a mile also. He'll be formidable in here, John, but it's hard for me to pick him, in my opinion, when I think this is a wide open race. I mean, he was 50 to 1 last time out when he ran second to U.S. Navy flag. So I'm going to go with another European, and that's Massar at 9 to 2. He's actually gotten to town rather early. We're shooting the show on a Tuesday. Right. We haven't, some of these Europeans are still clearing quarantine. We haven't quite seen them uh, yet, but Massar is a horse that I have seen. Looks like he's carrying good flesh. He's got a Miler's uh, pedigree and he comes out of Group 1 company. He has a little tactical speed. That's the key for me, the ability to be placed in the race as opposed to falling way out of it and being paced and, and traffic dependent. So Massar at 9-2, but watch out for a long shot. And if a long shot wins in here, I'm looking at Catholic Boy a little bit. Okay. Sharp connections a lot of people don't know about yet. Jonathan Thomas, horses 2-for-2. Two two. I liked his win at Saratoga. 
He's a big son of more than ready. My question with him is he drew inside. He's going to have to carve out a clean trip because he is so big, John. But I think the upside is there that at 12 to 1 in the morning line, he's interesting to me. All right, we're moving now to the marquee race of Friday. And, of course, that is the distaff. You know, this division lost a few of its superstars this year. But no it's question. still a pretty salty race. Tell me, what do you think? I know you have been pretty keen on the three-year-olds. Do you think one of them can get it done or does the, the older mare get it done? Well, again, you get a good blend of three-year-olds facing older mares. Like you said, you have two mares that are on their way out, a Forever and Bridal and Stellar Wind, and you have two up-and-coming three-year-old fillies that have not only had great years, great summers, but, you know, look at a filly like Elate. I mean, she, she could give you impressions of Royal Delta a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. big black filly who really didn't make it to, on the oak scene but came into her own over the summertime and really just looks like she's blossoming right now and has a major future. The question is, will that future be now on the road when she has to face older mares? Forever Unbridled always fires her A race at a mile and eight, John. I think she'll get enough speed in here. She's number one on my list. And look, she's four to one on the morning line. I was a little surprised by that. I mean, she's third, fourth choice in here on the morning line, John. It's because nobody talks about her. She just trains at Churchill Downs. Yeah. She didn't run in a final prep. People have sort of forgot about her. I think Forever and Bridles is still the mayor to beat in here, and I like her four to one price. She's my pick. All right, we're moving to Saturday now. We're going to start off with two-year-olds again, and we'll talk to juvenile fillies. Tell me about this race. Who do you like? Yeah, I mean, here's where the draw again has a little bit of a question mark. Heavenly Love, my number one. I like her because, again, it's all about projecting upside around two turns. She showed that now, Sabati's really impressed with her effort there. The way she ran away from Princess Warrior, who I think is another good filly in her own regard, John. Just not sure how far she wants to go, but Mark Cassie made this move with Classic Empire successfully going from Keeneland to San Anita last year. I liked her comeback brief. She worked with Flame Away at Keeneland. They worked, I think, 47 and 4. And she could have done a lot more. I, I like the way she moves. It shows me that she came out of the race the right way, and she's ready for this race. The question is the one hole. She's going to have to negotiate a good trip from the one hole, but she broke so well in the Alcibiades, she looks like a good gate horse. I think she'll get a good run in the first turn, put herself in position so she does not get shuffled back. I think she's a filly to beat it. Nine to two, though, we've seen the juvenile fillies have been a wide open race. I mean, last year we picked Champagne Room at 30 something to one as, yeah. as our best long shot, and she got the, she got the job done here. So if I'm going to give you a long shot, watch out from Maya Malibu. She was on the first top five that we launched and she's run poorly since then. Grand Motions put blinkers on her and thought enough of her to ship her all the way to Del Mar. Pretty conservative guy and run her in this race. I saw her go over the track. I thought she looked great physically. Big, beautiful daughter. It's no question she's a two-turn filly with the future. So if they get a little speed crazy up front, watch out for Javier and Maya Malibu coming late at 21. All right, got to give our sponsor a plug right here too. Man, what a Breeders' Cup for Malibu. Man, oh. He's got some serious chances in here. And a lot of contenders. It's been a great year for him. So Seven horses. It's great to see uh, Spendthrift doing so well. All right, we're going to talk now about a race. We don't have a top five for it. Yeah. I don't know very much about it, but tell me, who do you like in the turf sprint? The one thing I'll say about the turf sprint is it's not California, the six and a half that we're used to at Santa Anita, where you're making a right hand turn back to the left, going up and down hills over the dirt course. I mean, that's a niche thing that the Californians love. This is a legit five eighths turf sprint. I think Wesley Ward's Philly is probably going to take a lot of money in here, and some of these Europeans, uh, my Miss Aurelia, or Miss uh, yeah. Lady Aurelia, rather, uh, in here. However, I'm going to lean towards, I think the Midwestern in New York, crack five furlong sprinters, the older Colts hmm. are the class of this race, in my opinion. I don't like pure sensations draw on the far outside, but he's coming in fresh off a good work tap, and he has probably the best five furlong form in terms of back class and speed ratings that at 10 to 1 in the morning line, he has enough speed. I think you want speed in this race, John. He's got enough speed to make it to the turn and take that turn tucked in without losing too much ground. I think uh, Pure Sensation is a horse in here that's very interesting at 10 to 1. All right, let's move now to the Philly and Mare Sprint and tell me who do you like in this race? Yeah, Philly and Mare Sprint, you know, this is a wide open race in my opinion. I ended up on our number one, Sky Diamonds, just because I liked the breeze last time out. She's showing me that she's still in form, and she's just been so consistent all year long, John. Top class, beating all the top Philly and Mare sprinters you know, on the West Coast. I don't like that she drew a little wide in here, but she's tactical enough. Doesn't matter the distance, the racetrack. She's shown up all year long. I'm relying her on her showing up again here. Unique Bella, you know, look, she's going to take a ton of money, but she's a big framey mare. I think she's a two-turn mare, so it's hard for me. They're going to have to lose ground to keep her from getting stopped in here, yeah. and I just don't think it's seven-eighths against a grade one field like this. I'd rather air with Sky Diamonds, who's more tactical and really a niche six to seven furlong sprinter as opposed to Unique Bella, where I know her future is going to be around two turns. All right, let's stick with the Phillies now, and let's talk about the Philly and Mare turf. You think the Europeans are going to lock this one up as well, or do we got a shot in here? 
Man, I'll tell you what, I mean, this is Lady Eli's race, and she's your deserving favorite, and Chad Brown says she's doing unbelievable. She's 5-2 to two on the morning line. I'm going to pick her to win because of her tactical speed at a mile and eighth over that turf course. We've talked about it before, but I'll tell you what, I think the morning line is way off in mm -hmm. this race. Rhododendron drew the far outside, so, you know, I don't like her quite as much, and uh, I think Wahida is a very interesting filly. Would have liked to have seen her run the QE2 where I think she would have been the horse to beat. But Queen's Trust, John, is your defending champion, a bona fide firm course mare, ran down Lady Eli last time out, coming back over here and has had good form all year. You look at her time form already. She's been running against the best, uh, best horses in Europe, even males over there, and giving a pretty good account of herself. And her worst performances have been over soft type ground. Well, she's going to get firm ground again. We saw how she did last year yeah. in this race, taking left hand turns and running down Lady Eli. She's 12 to 1 on the morning line. Wow. So let me tell you that uh, that morning line I think is bad. I think she'll be a lot shorter price than that. But if Queen's Trust is anywhere at 10 to 1 or double digit odds, that's where my money's going in this race. All right, we're going to start winding it down now. Let's go ahead and talk about the sprint. I know this is a race you wanted to see horses like Practical Joke in there. Do you think the defending champion is back to form and you think he's got a shot to win this race? Trey Fong is doing tremendous and I actually think his draw is better than people think in here because the horses even though he drew the two hole the horses around him in terms of the immediate horses on his outside and the horse on the rail they don't have the speed he has so he's going to be like last year's Breeders Cup if you remember he sort of had that inside run and he's going to try to slow things down and keep a straw out of his path. One thing I don't like about Dre Fong is he's never had to overcome adversity. Now it's a credit to him but in here Imperial Hint drawing the far outside I think he could be a freakish type horse, John. He was actually my number one. I just, if this race was in New York, he'd probably remain my number one, but it's in Dre Fong's backyard. Bob Baffert's so good with sprinters and has been deliberate. I got to put Dre Fong number one, but I do think Imperial Hint, Roy H, Takaful, I mean, there's a lot of speed in here yeah. that I do think that this could be a meltdown type scenario. And so I'm going to go with a bit of a price in here. I'm going with American Pastime, John. He's 12 to 1 on the morning line. Love the way he's training out mm. there. I mean, he's a big, blocky colt. I think has a tremendous future in front of him. So I'm going to take a little bit of a risk in price in here. 12 to 1. I think American Pass Ground saves ground on the inside, comes and gets him late at a big price. All right, let's move now back to the turf and let's talk about the mile, Joel. This is a huge race. It's, it's one that, that the Europeans really like to, to win. Uh, you know, we've seen horses like Goldakova. We've seen horses like Teppin. Tell me, who do you think is going to win this race this year? You know, I, I went with World Appeal, uh, World Approval, <laughs> in terms of my picking here, John, uh, at 9-2. to two, um, You know, I'm not crazy about the price, but I love the fact that he's clearly improved and honed in as a miler. I mean, we've talked about that. He's a half to Miesk approval, mm -hmm. another Breeders' Cup mile winner. I mean, yep. family just cranked out. Zai approval is another great miler that ran in this race. So I just love the form he's in right now. Johnny V fits him like a glove. He's got the tactical speed that I think they'll be pacing there. I mean, Mid Midnight Storm, I was surprised, went into this race. And they drew the one and the two hole, both pace setters, uh, the other one being heart to heart, John. So I think they'll push out of there. There'll be some speed in this race, and I think it'll allow the field to separate. I just think he's the safest choice to actually handle the Del Mar conditions as opposed to the Europeans. Like Ribchester, you know, I just don't know if his form on firm ground is quite as good to rely on him at a short price. But let me tell you this, I almost made him my best bet long shot. Um, I didn't end up doing it because I liked another one a little bit better, but Zelzal, John, at 20 to 1, if he can save ground on the inside, I mean, I, I like Sidois last time in the Shadwell at mm -hmm. Keeneland because he got covered up and he ran down heart to heart. Zelzal is a better horse than Sidois, in my opinion. He's 20 to 1 on the morning line. The French have done tremendous in the Breeders' Cup mile. Caraconti, we can think of some, some really good French horses that have sprung some upsets in here. Zelzal is a horse that's always been well met. Watch out for his turn of foot late at 20 to 1. All right, let's talk now about the Juvenile. This is a race that's always intriguing to us because of our Triple Crown Insider where we start looking for those future stars going into three-year-olds. This is a race this year that's full of a lot of talent, but it kind of starts with Bolt Dioro. Yeah. A lot of people not happy with his draw. Tell me, what did, it, did it affect your decision at all? It didn't affect my decision, John. He's so tactical and he's in such great form. Now, he's a big horse. Um, you know, flesh still looks pretty good in my opinion. He's run very hard. I mean, off that last performance, it's easy to get excited and accept a short price on him, but you, you do wonder about a bounce a little bit. I mean, he's been campaigned hard. He's run hard. Mm -hmm. um, I still think he's heads and shoulders the class of this field. He ought to win. He's 9-5, to five, nothing exciting to pick as a winner, but he is my pick as a winner. And I do like both these curling colts to run second, maybe even third behind him. So I'd, I'd probably key Bolt Doro 
over the Kernel and Colts. And if you want to flip it around, if Bolt Dora were to get in some trouble or something, I do think Good Magic, course like that, has tremendous upside. And what confidence Chad Brown showing to bring this maiden over to California and run him in this race. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know how he came out of the champagne. Right. And he's going to love two turns. So if there's a horse that's sneaky that could beat him, watch out for Good Magic. But that's only if Bolt Dora is not on his A game. If he brings his B plus game, he wins this. All right, that sounds good, man. We've got two more races. Hang in there with us. So let's talk about the turf. Joel, this is the, the second most expensive race here at the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. Tell me this year, do you think that the Europeans just have this locked up? I always love the Europeans in this 12 furlong race, John. I mean, particularly when, you know, you could argue Beach Patrol is coming in this race tremendous, but Beach Patrol is a, a speed type horse, and he's going to have to contend with maybe one of the best speed 12 furlong horses in the world. I mean, you're defending champion in here, Highland Real. I think there's some pace in here. I mean, Oscar performance looks like he's sharp right now. He has outside speed in here, drawing the far outside. He's going to have to go, in my opinion, so he can save ground. I think this, this field's going to be strung out a little bit. I think there's going to be plenty enough speed. So I'm looking for an upset closer in here. And of course, I'm looking to the Europeans. And again, we talked about last week, seventh heaven. Mm -hmm. Number three on my list, she's 21 in, 21 in the morning line, John. If, uh, if Heffernan can save ground on the inside, get the speed to produce in front of him, I think she can produce, I think she has the turn of foot, 12 furlongs on a firm turf hmm. to make this very interesting for Coolmore. And she's 21 on the morning line, so she's my best bet. All right, well, let's move now to the marquee race of the entire Breeders' Cup. Of course, it's the classic. And Joel, this race really starts with Arrowgate. I know that he's lost his last couple of races. Yeah. When I look at this draw and I kind of look through all the races, that this is the horse that I think got the worst of the draw. Just because of, you know, and now he's on the rail. You see what he did in Dubai. If he breaks tardy in here, you think he's in big trouble? I'll say this. Like Dre Fong, though, the thing I like about Arrogate drawing the rail, it might actually help him. Now, he's a big horse. If he gets stopped or shuffled back, I agree, it's over for him. He needs a clean trip. But he's broken from the rail a couple times, mm -hmm. Travers being one, I think, Pegasus World Cup. And he's negotiated a good trip out of there. And I think because he broke out of the rail, Mike got him into the race early because he had to. You have to make a run in that first yep. turn. And I think that this is what this colt needs. I mean, I think it's mostly mental with him. I mean, you look at his lack of focus. Bob works him in company every time, won't work him by himself. I think it's clearly a mental block for Arrogate. So I actually think the one hole could improve his chances because he's not just going to fall out of the gate and lose himself. Mike's going to ask him. He's going to have action the inside of him. As long as he doesn't get stopped, I actually think it'll be a benefit for Arrogate. And the fact that, you know, you look at the horses on his immediate, four or five horses on his outside, most of them are closers. I think he can outbreak them and he's got enough speed that he can clear them. The question will be Gun Runner and some of this other speed coming mm -hmm. over on him. The fact that Collected drew the far outside, I think Bob's going to send Collected. I think the pace is going to be legit in here. I expect Arrogate not to be tremendously far off a of Gun Runner, have him in his sights in here. I'm going with Arrogate, John. Again, I'm not as confident in this pick as I was last year because I don't think he's training as well as he was last year. Yeah. But last year he had to run a 120 bar and he ran his eyeballs out. I don't know if he has to do that this year. Gunrunner's a great horse. I think he's going to be on the board. Arrogate is still the horse for me. Once he lengthens that stride at a mile and a quarter, I don't think any horse can match his stride. And I think he's doing well enough. Bob's pointing for this race. He's my pick in here, but I got to tell you, my best long shot of the Breeders' Cup, and I almost picked him on top. And the reason I almost picked him on top is I think Arrogate, everybody's going to be so worried about Gunrunner. I think there's going to be enough pace in this race early. Watch out for Gunna Vera, John. Mm. His Travers was a lot better than you think it was. He finally has weight on. We've loved his talent all year long. He ran a one and three quarters on the sheets, and the Travers was all over the place. Had no shot to catch West Coast that day, who saved all the ground, had it hit basically his own way on the front end. Yep. Gun runner, or excuse me, Gun Vera is 30 to 1 in here. And if, I'm just telling you, if they get a little wacky up front, he can come get them late, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you. You took the words right out of my mouth. That's really the horse that you can see it all sizing up now. You know, horse racing is horse racing. It's hard to predict, but you can definitely see it. If they're going to have to go with Arrowgate, you know they're going to go with Collected. It could get a little crazy, gun, throw Gun Runner in there. This horse definitely got the talent. He's one of those underrated kind of horses that just keeps being consistent, being consistent. Like you said, he looks great right now. We'll see what happens. Look, he's 30 to 1. He's pace dependent. He's 30 to 1 for a reason. And the, if the speed doesn't back up, he's not going to win the race. But if the jockey just breaks, goes over the rail, saves ground, produces one run, and they come back to him, I think he's the best closer, dead closer in the race. And he's fast enough to win this race. And he's doing phenomenal. I saw him the other day. 
man, he looks like a different horse physically than what we saw on the Triple Crown right. when he was sure. out, when he was totally out of horse. I mean, I'm just telling you, this horse has a ton of talent. I think he's going to make a run in here. Do I think he's going to win? At the end of the day, I picked Arrogate, but Gun I think Gunnavera is going to make an impression in the stretch that's going to impress a lot of people. All right, thank you, Joel, and thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sticking with us. We know it was a lot of races to go over. We wanted to get you guys this information out early. Make sure you come back next week. We'll talk about the winners, and we'll start talking about championships, year-end championships for the third red industry.